dear students under the topic radius of curvature here we have a very significant problem the question is show that the radius of curvature at any point of the catenary y equals c cos hx by c is equal to the length of the portion of the normal intercepted between the curve and the axis of x so now here they have given a curve which is a catenary and the equation of curve is y equals c cos h x by c where c is a constant and cos h x by c is an hyperbolic trigonometric function so this cos h is a hyperbolic trigonometric function so now we are asked to find the radius of curvature of this curve and we have to prove that that uh, the radius of curvature of this curve is equal to the length of the portion of the normal which is intercepted between the curve and the axis of x so first of all we should we shall find the radius of curvature of the given catenary sometimes this question may be just they may ask you to find the radius of curvature of the catenary or that is this curve and uh, or sometimes they may ask you to prove that this the radius of curvature of the catenary is equal to the length of the normal which is intercepted between the curve and the x axis so first of for this first of all we have to find the radius of curvature so let us see that now now the given curve is y is equal to c cos h x by c so very carefully students you should remember that cos h is a function and x by c is the angle so by mistake some students what they tend to do is they write this cos separately and they write this h along with the angle x by c they write they write it as cos h x by c which is a mistake because that h is a function that is cos h is a function together it's a trigonometric function hyperbolic trigonometric functions together it has to be written and do not separate this h from cos yes after that in order to find the radius of curvature first step is we have to find the derivative of y with respect to x so we shall find dy by dx that is differentiating the given curve with respect to x so dy by dx will be equal to c is a constant so we have to write as it is now the differentiation of cos h function is sin h it is simply sin h and it is not negative in uh, while differentiating a hyperbolic function the differentiation of sin h x is cos h x and the differentiation of cos h x is the same uh, that is uh, sin h x but you don't have a negative sign for hyperbolic so remember that so cos h x by c when differentiated you get sin h x by c and then you have to use chain rule method in order to differentiate x by c the differentiation of x is 1 and 1 by c if you differentiate it, it is in multiplication with x and so you have to multiply that constant 1 by c and so this c and this c gets cancelled you should not cancel the angle uh, because this c is with the angle by mistake students sometimes tend to cancel this c also so that is also wrong so you should not cancel this c because this c belongs to the angle so you can cancel only this c and this c because this is in the numerator and this is separately in the denominator so you can cancel it and finally you get dy by dx to be sin h x by c now after finding this we have to find d square y by dx square so further we have to differentiate this with respect to x what did i tell you differentiation of sin h x is cos h x so now here you will be getting cos h and x by c multiplied with the constant c that is which is in the denominator so multiplied with 1 by c so therefore d squared y by dx square will be 1 by c cos h x by c so we have obtained dy by dx and d squared y by dx square in the next step we have to find the radius of curvature rho 
so what is the formula we know that the radius of curvature rho is given by the formula 1 plus dy by dx square the whole raised to the power of 3 by 2 the whole divided by d squared y by dx square so now we shall substitute what we have obtained so 1 plus what is dy by dx we have obtained it to be sin h x by c so sin h x by c and we have a square for dy by dx so it will be sin h x by c the whole square and the square goes to the trigonometric function so sin h squared x by c it can be written as sin h square x by c and this full uh, terms is raised to the power 3 by 2 divided by d squared y by dx square what is that that is 1 by c cos h x by c so it is 1 by c cos h x by c so now further if you see under the trigonometric identities we know that uh, by using the trigonometric identity we have we know that cos h squared x minus sin h squared x is equal to 1 so when you have an hyperbolic function this is the identity remember students it is different from a trigonometric function which does not have an h because the that formula will be different in that we know that it is sin squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1 but because this is hyperbolic function we have cos h square x minus sin h squared x to be equal to 1 now from this we can write 1 plus okay so 1 plus sin h squared x to be equal to this that is cos h x uh, h squared x so instead of 1 plus this sin h squared x we can replace it by cos h squared x and here we have x by c so what will be 1 plus sin h squared x by c it will be equal to cos h squared x by c so let us substitute this quantity at this place that is at the place of 1 plus sin h squared x by c we will replace it by cos h squared x by c by using this formula so this will be equal to cos h squared x by c the whole raised to the power 3 by 2 divided by 1 plus 1 by c cos h x by c now this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled because this is in the uh, square and this becomes the square root of cos h square and so it becomes cos h x by c and we have only the cube of it so this will be further equal to cos h this power 3 comes here x de, x by c the whole divided by 1 by c cos h x by c now one of the cos h x by c gets cancelled and this 3 becomes 2 and so and the c which is in the denominator of the denominator it goes to the numerator and it becomes c cos h squared x by c yes now further if you see what is this cos h squared x by c now if we take the question here we have y to be equal to c cos h x by c so from this we can write y by c is equal to cos h x by c and cos h squared x by c squaring on both sides we get cos h squared x by c to be equal to y squared by c squared so we can substitute that over here instead of cos h squared x by c we can replace it by this that is y squared by c squared so i am replacing it by c multiplied with y squared divided by c squared now one of the c gets cancelled and we get rho to be equal to y squared by c so therefore the radius of curvature of the given catenary is rho equals y squared by c 
Now we have found the radius of curvature of the given curve. Next we have to find the length of the normal. So length of the normal intercepted between the curve and the x axis. So we have to find that and we have to prove that it is equal to the radius of curvature that we have found now. So let us find that. So it is obtained by the formula for the length of the normal. So you please make a note of it. The length of the normal intercepted by the uh, intercepted between the curve and the x axis is given by the formula y multiplied with you remember this formula y multiplied with dy by dx the whole squared whole raised to the power of 1 by 2 so remember it is y multiplied with 1 plus dy by dx square the whole raised to the power of 1 by 2 now using this formula we have to find the length of the normal so that will be equal to y multiplied with 1 plus what is dy by dx? It is over here. We have already obtained dy by dx is equal to sin hx by c. So we have to substitute this over there. So it is sin hx by c and they have taken the square of this. So where, where should we put the square? I already told you here. So square the whole raised to the power 1 by 2. And that is equal to y multiplied with what is 1 plus sin h squared x by c. Already we have evaluated here. 1 plus sin h squared x by c is cos h squared x by c. So this one we are going to substitute over here. So it becomes cos h squared x by c whole raised to the power of 1 by 2. Now this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled and we are left out only with cos h x by c. So y multiplied with cos h x by c. But from the given question what did we obtain cos h x by c as it is y by c. So this we will take and substitute instead of this one that is cos h x by c. So this will become it's equal to y multiplied with y by c and that will be equal to y squared by c. So therefore the length of the normal we have obtained to be y squared by c and the radius of curvature of the given catenary is also y squared by c and hence we have proved that the radius of curvature at any point of the given catenary is equal to the length of the portion of the normal intercepted between the curve and the x-axis. So we have proved the required result. Sometimes they may ask you only to find the radius of curvature of the catenary y equals c cos h x by c where you can just stop with this when you find the radius of curvature you can stop the problem if suppose they prove they are they ask you to prove that it is equal to the uh, length of the normal then you should do these steps and complete the problem so hope you have understood this concept thank you